I realize I strive for a lot of perfection. I don't want people to see my imperfection. I don't want them to know my insight. So I find that it's very easy to deny things for myself so that I can pretend to live in a different reality. I called it hashtag denial game strong <laughs> because I was really in denial for a lot of things. I thought it was really funny to have a hashtag but actually it still felt very, very hollow inside. Actually, there are other pictures of her looking really dis distraught. Yeah, this is a picture of my mom where she was already starting to show signs of the illness. You can see my mother looking a little bit fierce. If you look really more closely at her face here, she's quite there but not really all there. This is not the mom I remember. This is the mom I actually remember. You can see like her smile is really a little bit more genuine. My mom was a young mom, so she was very fun and imaginative. She would be the one to tell us a lot of stories, make a lot of jokes. So to see her have to go through pain and uh, loss was very interesting, uh, but also very sad experience. Uh. It's like, what happened to this lady? She was so nice. Gone. I remember the darkness, I remember that shouting, the screaming, the name calling, how we would have physical fights because I'm maybe late uh, coming home from school when I actually just missed the bus. It's really very mad, you know. The story is really very ridiculous, but I'll share it. Okay, so I was writing in my diary about a crush that I had on a boy. It's my diary, got locked and everything, kept it under the under the bed. One day, I came home and my mom was not okay. She took my basketball, wrote his name on it, and then stabbed it with a screwdriver. Ah, <laughs> I, I remember watching it going like... And then she said, you slut, you slut, you bitch, you're such a slut. I um, didn't know how to respond. So I fled away crying. Because my mom was volatile, right? So a lot of people didn't want their children around her. That meant for me, suddenly Christmas season, I would be alone. Growing up in church means that we have to attend church camps. Sessions would mean that we need to write letters to our parents and let them know the struggles that we are going through. Candlelight, very dim session, play emo song, you know that kind of thing. While everyone else is doing this activity, I was in the corner, very stressed out about this activity. Is my mother going to have an episode? Is she going to embarrass me in front of my friends? The anxiety I couldn't express to anyone. So I can't share how I'm really feeling with my friends, so-called friends, because I'm, I'm worried that they will judge me. And then also in this letter that reaches my parents, I can't tell them I'm worried about what you're going to do later because I can't hurt them, right? So what do I write on this paper and how am I supposed to feel and what do I... So I just put down on what I think is the correct emotion and what is expected of, the, of this activity. And then the true self just feels completely misunderstood. I have all these deeper truths that I am hiding and I can't and won't share it with anyone. So I often had two lives. I had a very seemingly charming life outside, fun, funny and uh, pretty. 
I mean, as a teenager, there are so many overwhelming thoughts of being accepted. You have to fake it until you make it. So I learned how to fake it from a really young age. Just deny myself of a lot of truth. I was um, clearly trying to get her to take a photo <laughs> by forcing her. No, okay. Be because I'm alone lah, in this picture with my dog, right? So it's really about being quite lonely in that journey. Lah. And having my dog as my best friend um, that I felt could understand me would be... That would be the closest picture I can use to describe my journey uh, of um, childhood. Yeah, okay. I'm tapering off because I'm just realizing, wow, I was really very lonely, so poor thing. No wonder I need to do inner child work, you know, that makes so much sense now. Mm. Yeah. The first three sessions, I started to automatically remember things in my childhood. Stories I used to tell people as entertainment were actually my stories of anxiety, my childhood memories that were really actually very painful. So we're unpacking like low self-worth. Why do I think I have low self-worth? It's because I constantly look for validation from others. Why do I constantly look for validation from others? It's because deep down, I believe people won't believe me. So then we were going backwards, right? Why does this belief exist? She asked me, what memory does this take you back? Flashback to the time when I was five and my memory was myself hiding in a cupboard. I had a big cupboard and I was very small. I remember vividly like this was the memory, this is the body I was the body shape that I was in, and I was filled with fear and confusion and tears. So that memory was of the time when my mom had been ill, she had gone into one of her rages and I didn't know what to do, so I went to hide. And the thoughts that were running through my mind was, no one is going to believe me. Daddy is not going to know. I was afraid that if I told anyone, nobody would believe me. Nobody, nobody would believe that my mom is this person because at that time, outwardly, she was a very friendly lady. So in that one memory, right, I had all my core beliefs, you know, I am alone in this world, nobody's going to help me, no one's going to believe me because why would anybody believe a child? And um, just that, that, that anxiety started as young as that age. I think as an adult, when I learned how to talk and communicate, then it became like a space that I kept leaning into to latch on to people and get that validation and then you try and see if that person's gonna say oh no you're not like that lah <laughs> you know and then when I am in therapy I realize oh this is actually stemmed from the time that I was a teenager a child and I had nobody to talk to I had no way to express how I felt My painting so ugly, but okay, don't judge. <laughs> Not always does the painting turn out the way I want it to, but I don't really care because it's an expression also lah. If it's not perfect, never mind lah. Too perfect also not very nice. Like not natural enough. Like I didn't know my body is so long. So this tells me I need to go for a workshop to learn how to draw um, human. <laughs>
one of the things that I don't understand about myself is why am I always so angry? Why is that the only emotion that my body goes to? Don't I have other feelings? Can I feel sad? She asked me, what is your first memory of feeling anger? And then I got hit by, um, by a memory. I think around 15, 16, the memory was me studying. I was studying for my exams or something like that. I was filled with rage, you know, it's not even anger. Eh. I remember feeling out of control. My, my, my hands started to like clench and uh, my body had become very hard, like very rock solid. Then I started to get a bit breathless. I'm really angry in my head. I'm screaming. Like, I'm sh just so angry. So yeah, okay. I think maybe it was the first time I allowed that feeling to exist. Little did I know that I was actually very, 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 very angry with having to grow up with the circumstances of my family. Uh, yeah la. I care about her la. So then I would reach out to talk to her to make sure that she that she's okay. Are you okay or not? You know, it's like <laughs> that kind of angry tone and then she'll be like, yeah, I'm fine. I don't know, as long as you face something that is not loving from the people that you're supposed to feel the love from, you will just not be able to love that person freely because of the memories that you have. No matter how much you try to heal from it, it's just really... There's just really a limit. It's just not as free. How authentic you are, you will know. You will know yourself. And then the guilt is like, ah, shit. Why I cannot, ah? Yeah, sad. It's a sad feeling. It's a sad, sad feeling. I can also hear my critic going like, that's not very nice. I don't like my legs. <laughs> I just like plotted down this memory, that memory. Uh, I was looking at all the things that I remembered, right? And uh, yeah, it was just basically all the moments that I felt that nobody would understand me. Just that one. And I felt that constantly. I felt that very, very constantly. So I, I forgot about this entire emotion. I forgot about feeling um, misunderstood. I know now, because I just felt misunderstood, I didn't even understand myself. I didn't even try to understand myself. So I denied myself of myself. And I did not know or did not realise that I actually live feeling quite empty inside. Yeah. It's imperfect. But I shall embrace it. Uh, obviously, adult Stacy is in colourful clothes because yes, I'm usually in colourful clothes. But... Little Stacy is not, obviously. Um, she wore a lot of pink t-shirts that her mother used to buy for her. And I wanted to use this black skirt as a way to express how, um, yeah, I used to feel very dark la, as, a, as a kid, right? Uh, it's how my mother dressed me, but it's how I actually felt inside. Mm. Dark, dark, very dark. Okay. Okay, to be able to actually recognize parts of yourself, just recognizing your pain, then at the same time being there for yourself to recognize that feeling and say, I see you and tell that feeling, I'm here. I'm here now. When I look back and I think like, Poor thing. <laughs> poor thing, you poor girl, you went through so much. Um, and that 
I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of who you've become. How cheerful you have become. How hardworking you actually are. How beautiful you have turned out to be. And don't be afraid. You're actually really brave. You don't know it yet, but you're actually really brave. Fear nothing, I got you. Ah, all those lies. Like that.